ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Reading from Shrimad Bhagavatam, <clears throat> Canto 11, Chapter 14, entitled "Lord Krishna Explains the Yoga System." <clears> that <throat> sarva vyapakam chittam akrasya ekatra dharayet na anyani. चिंत भूय सुस्मितावे मुखम तत्सर्व्यापक चित्त आकृष्यकृतारे नान्यानी चिंत भूय सुस्मितावेन्मुखम तत्सर्व्यापक चित्त आकर्ष्यकत्र धारे नान्या चिंत भूय सुस्मितावेन्मुखम तत्सर्व्यापक चित्त आकर्ष्यकत्र धारे नान्या चिंत भूय सुस्मितावेन्मुखव्यापक चित्त सुस्मितावेन्मुखा तत्सर्व्यापक चित्त आकर्षेकत्र धारे नान्या चिंत भूय सुस्मितावेन्मुखा तत्सर्व्यापक चित्त आकर्षेकत्र धारे नान्या चिंत भूय सुस्मितावेन्मुखम लेडी तत्सर्व व्यापक चित्त आकर्षक धारे नान्या चिंत भूय सुस्मितावेन्मुखम तत् देर फॉर सर्व इन ऑल द पार्ट्स ऑफ द बॉडी व्यापक स्प्रेड चित्त कॉन्शियसनेस अकृष्य पुलिंग बैक एकत्र इन वन प्लेस धारे वन शुड कॉन्सेंट्रेट न not anyani other limbs of the body chintayet one should meditate on bhuyah again susmitam wonderfully smiling or laughing bhavayet one should concentrate on mukham the face translation one should then pull the consciousness back from all the limbs of that transcendental body at that time one should meditate only on the wonderfully smiling face of the lord text 44 tatra labdha pad padam chittam akrishya vyamani dharayet tatcha chaktatva madaroha na kinchid api chintayet being established in meditation on the lord's face one should then withdraw the consciousness and fix it in the sky then giving up such meditation 
one should become established in me and give up the process of meditation altogether. Purport. As one becomes established in pure consciousness, the duality of I am meditating and this is the object of my meditation vanishes and one comes to the stage of spontaneous relationship with the personality of Godhead. Every living entity is originally part and parts of the Supreme Lord and when that forgotten eternal relationship is revived, one experiences remembrance of the Absolute Truth. In that stage, described here as Mad Aroha, one no longer sees oneself as a meditator, nor the Lord as a mere object of meditation, but rather one enters the spiritual sky for an eternal life of bliss and knowledge and direct loving relationship with the Lord. Uddhava originally inquired about the procedure of meditation for those desiring liberation. The word Labdha Padam Labdha Padam indicates that when one fixes the mind upon the Lord's face, one achieves full liberation. In the post-liberation phase, one then proceeds to render service to the original personality of Godhead. By giving up the concept of being a meditator, one casts off the last small remnant of illusory energy and sees the Lord as He actually is. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Shahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhan Vitam Scha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namahan Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advai Takadadhara Sri Vashadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We are continuing to be blessed <coughs> to hear the transcendental <coughs> dialogue between Krishna's dear most friend in Dwarka. <coughs> it's wonderful that Krishna reveals the highest truths to his best friends. He spoke the Gita to Arjuna, his best friend, also called the Lord is called as Partha Sakhe, <coughs> and he's revealing even more elaborately now, because there is no emergency, there is no fight, there is no stress. <coughs> it's a friendly dialogue, but based on a relationship of submissive oral reception, asking questions and <coughs> the Lord is perfectly answering for Uddhav's benefit and for the benefit of all generations to come thereafter. <coughs> so again, the best of dialogues is coming between f two friends. <coughs> Goyam Akhyati Prichati. So, when senior devotees, spiritual masters are asked, when you people meet with your God brothers, what do you discuss? And when two friends who are deeply realized in Krishna consciousness, when they meet, we know what we talk when we meet, right? Prasad Mekaj. 
you know, usually we are on the Andamai platform, so we start off with basic, what's there for breakfast today and like that. <coughs> and maybe some Krishna concerts here and there. But when great souls meet, the answer was even they engage in soul searching discussions. Soul searching discussions. Right? Everyone is searching for things of this world. Right? Good house and property, a good car, a good partner, good food, nice clothes to wear. We are looking for these things, but when great souls meet, they are not searching for these things at all. They have given up that search, but they are still searching, of course. <coughs> they are searching for Krishna, right? And therefore, they search for Krishna by having soul-searching discussions, because Krishna is in the <coughs> very heart of the soul. So here also, they are having this very beautiful dialogue. And just last, I think yesterday, uh, we heard something very beautiful and Krishna is continuing that discussion further. We heard Krishna describing his own self. Right? I think that, that was very wonderful. Right? Krishna is describing his own beauty. When he tells about how to meditate on the Lord and the heart, the elaborate, uh, for those who are not here yesterday, I am going to read that again, right? Because this fascinated me because, you know, how does it feel to describe your own self? <laughs> this is my forehead, this is my eyes. But Krishna is, you know, he has no false ego, but describing himself. So, keeping the eyes half closed and fixed on the tip of one's nose, please uh, uh, hear this carefully because this is what is the core of the discussion. The chapter is coming to an end in two verses. So Krishna is concluding with something very essential, is revealing that what is and what should be the object of one's meditation. Right? So, of course it is not impersonal meditation at all, which is recommended by less intelligent people. As Prabhupada says, those with poor fund of knowledge they will meditate on a candle or a chakra or a crack in the wall or the joint between two walls, you know, X and Y axis. <laughs> so then they will meditate on these sort of things, right? Uh, trying hard to control the mind, which is so restless. The purpose is clear, but the methodology is uh, quite inferior and primitive, right? But here, in the most evolved state of bhakti yoga, Krishna is so beautifully, mercifully telling his own dear friend what should he meditate on. So we're going to hear from Krishna how he manifests as the Lord in the heart. And therefore it is very special. Keeping the eyes half closed and fixed on the tip on one's nose, being alignment and alert. So half closed eyes doesn't mean we are sleepy. <laughs> so it is clarified here because when we close our eyes half, it has no time to become fully closed. <laughs> right? You know, even if you are trying hard to keep them wide open, they still become closed. So, what would you call if they are half, half closed, then in the matter of next moment they are fully closed. <laughs> so, but Krishna clarifies, even if you are having half closed eyes, you are enlivened and you are alert. You are alert, right? And one should meditate on the lotus flower situated in the heart. Right? <clears throat> So we all of us have an altar in the heart, right? Krishna is not there, in a, in a, when we say he's in the heart, he's not in, within the pad of the bloody chamber of left ventricle or right ventricle. He's not there. That is not the heart we're talking about, right? This is not the gross heart with four chambers and four walls. No, right? <clears throat> this is a subtle existence of the Lord in the region of the heart, right? And it's way beyond just the physical component of heart, what the heart is where the heart is, but in the region of the heart is Krishna, Riddhi, Riddhi Sanimishto. So heart is there, but not in that bloody mess. This lotus has eight petals and is situated in an erect lotus stalk. One should meditate on the sun, the moon and the fire, placing them one after another within the world of that lotus flower. Placing my transcendental form within the fire one should meditate upon it as the auspicious goal of all meditation. That form is perfectly proportioned. 
every limb is perfect right everything is perfect krishna is the we cannot say the perfection of creation because he was not he was not created somebody somebody can say this is the perfection of creation huh? but krishna was not created so we cannot say he is the perfection of creation but he is personification of perfection right all perfection which ever whatever we may see all proceeds from his he is the wholesome embodiment of all perfection therefore his eyes his eyebrows everything is has to be just absolutely perfect right <clears throat> so uh, is perfectly proportioned gentle and cheerful that word which is used also today is susmitam so there is this in this world we have is called as kuntha right and that's true it is not what scripture says is not theoretical at all all scripture is real and practical and is it difficult to see this all around us everyone is constantly how many times the word used in you know today's language tension mat kar yaar don't have tension don't have tension right the word tension is used so much in our daily language right today i i don't know you know in my tenure of life i did not hear this word tension so much you know 10 years back really this word not used but in in 10 years in last 10 to 12 years i can see that this word is used in practically every converse with somebody else somebody is expressing his tension and somebody is saying tension mat kar <laughs> and the guy gets more tension out of that you know <laughs> because he doesn't you don't understand what i'm going through you're just saying tension mat kar you know but I, i'm going crazy with this loans and whatever else my wife's problem or my mother in law's problem or whatever else you know my joblessness and everything else what is going on there is so much tension in my life but krishna is not kuntha he is not a part of kuntha he is part of vaikuntha jagat so krishna is never in tension never in tension and if he is in tension about saving arjuna's life from say the kauravas then it is transcendental anxiety right but it's not like a tension like ours for his own for his selfishness it is always anxiety for somebody else whom he loves anxiety for draupadi anxiety for saving the the, the pandavas anxiety for you know <clears throat> doing what are i supposed to do to kill the demons and protect the dwarka vasis etc so his anxiety is never selfish our anxiety is for ourselves most of the time or for the or for those who are connected to us in that i and me concept right but krishna is always 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 susmitam always in his natural state always smiling right so we like to see people who are smiling is it not people who have a smiling face they are very attractive in in this world people who are he say he has a nice smile you know we say sometimes right or oh, she has a nice smile or he has a nice smile so people who have a nice smile are always people who are more more somebody who are more uh, you know attractive to look at and somebody says and you see somebody and said castor oil pia hai kya you know <laughs> right so you know when you take castor oil so ayurvedic doctors will recommend the castor oil for bowel care right it is a horrible taste right <clears throat> said so, you know but krishna is always susmitam always smiling therefore we like to see him huh? because it is said krishna's smile is so powerful that he has a power if he meditated on that smile to eradicate an ocean of tears if somebody is so sorrowful in his life that he has shed in practical ocean of tears out of misery and that can happen sometimes not literally ocean but one can really cry over something very horrible happened in his life but if somebody meditates on krishna on a smile it is so powerful that there is a deep sense of solace hmm? therefore you will see the deities faces are always painted with a smiling face right and you and i love to see those deities you go to for example years ago we had gone with radhana swami to uh, eka chakra so <coughs> 1986 uh, it was such a beautiful experience and uh, uh, for the first time that time eka chakra was not even so much frequented by iskon devotees it was sort of not in the map of it was a little far from mayapur 7 hours drive etc but then we be beheld the deities of bankim rai 
first world ishta dev of lord nityananda he had such not he had he has he has such a beautiful smile you people remember you remember his face how many of you remember vankim rai's face you know not so much right <laughs> but next time you go to this the form you can see you know any of her pictures but he has a beautiful beautiful smile very nice he is having a small topi uh, and a nice smile and is really bend bang banke is really banke is really bend in three places beautifully L- little extra bend is there <laughs> more than a normal bend so a very nice smile hmm? so that that and because the smile was so beautiful even after so many years i'm remembering him and if someone were to ask me uh, uh, which are the most beautiful deities of in terms of the smile i would probably say banke mara is the first <laughs> this smile is really captivating so krishna is susmitam susmitam and therefore we should come in front of him and so that even whatever anxieties we have stresses we have problems we have just by coming to the lord and seeing his face his beautiful face we feel oh it's not so bad your heart gets soothed very soothing uh, it possesses four beautiful long arms a charming beautiful neck a handsome forehead pure smile and glowing shark shaped earring suspended by two identical uh, ears huh? so he has earrings also but they are shark shaped i don't know why they are shark shaped but they are shark shaped there must be some reason why krishna likes makara kundala that's you see this matches with when we hear bhagavatam it doesn't you know we we don't we see don't see tukara mara saying something else right so you know they are seeing the same person <laughs> you know so everything matches it is not that oh yeah then uh, something else something else right so what acharya says in the bhagavatam what is said in the bhagavatam so many thousands of years ago what tukara mara saw just 450 years ago right makara kundala kasi pitambara right <clears throat> so the that spiritual form is a color of dark rain rain cloud and is garbed in golden yellowish silk right that is what we call as pitambara this is krishna's favorite dhoti color right you know and it may appear that does he wear the same dhoti every day Huh? but it's like do we chant the same mantra every day but within that one mantra that's infinite glory right is it not true the pure devotees are crying why don't i have more tongues why don't i have more ears because they cannot accommodate sufficiently the nectar emanating oozing out from one name of krishna so it is so, so the material mind it is krishna is krishna two syllables how can there be so much of and what's there so much in it right but we're looking very very mundanely hmm? <clears throat> so even though we may say krishna is always wearing the same type of dhoti there is infinite glory infinite beauty in the same fabric of krishna's color infinite beauty in the same color for us we have to wear a different dress to feel beautiful like could i wear a black pant and a gray pant or a blue pant or a white pant whatever i have to change that i cannot feel infinite pleasure in wearing the same cloth every day right but krishna can feel the infinite pleasure in the same cloth why because it manifestation of balram ji maharaj right is expansion of balram ji who is serving with infinite love in the form of his dress right so it is not just a fabric like our fabric of this world made in a factory or a mill it's transformation of balram ji's love in the form of his brahmin thread his crown his bracelets his anklets of course his nice dress now how much how much balram loves krishna is there any calculation no infinite so there is infinite beauty in that yellowish garment of silk cloth that is krishna right is never krishna is never static nothing in krishna consciousness is static it may be the same dress the same leela the same mantra right the same dg but within that apparent oneness is infinity it's one but infinity in that one it's mathematically not possible to understand this <laughs> right it cannot be explained by the mundane mind how can there be something one and infinity in that one 
that is krishna is purna in that one <coughs> the chest of that form is the abode of sri vatsa and the goddess of fortune and that form is also decorated with the conch shell disc club lotus flower and the garland of forest flowers hmm? the two brilliant lotus feet are decorated with ankle bells and bracelets and that form exhibits the kaustubha gem along with an effulgent crown the upper hips are beautified by a golden belt and the arms are decorated with valuable bracelets all of the limbs of the beautiful form capture the heart that is the point this is the real point right that why is he the way he is because his beauty has the power to capture our heart capture capture means you are conquered when you are conquered you say i am captured now when you overpowered by something i am captured as a prisoner you put you know you am captured you cannot free yourself right so you're not just influenced you're not just affected you're not just impacted but you are captured right so krishna has a beauty which captures people's consciousness and that's very powerful right and once you get conquered by that beauty you cannot escape do not don't go to keshi ghat don't go to keshi ghat because if you happen to see once that form of the lord playing the flute on the bank of the keshi ghat you will destroy your material life and never find anything attractive in this world don't go there <laughs> prabhu some wants us to do that it's a positive way of glorifying krishna right because if you see him you get what you get captured and we are waiting for that day when will that day me kebi habi habi bolo sayidina mar when will that day come and actually we will get captured by krishna's beauty right we are waiting for that day to experience even a small fragmental molecule of atomic fraction of his beauty right krishna is so beautiful he is just so beautiful right he is just absolutely beautiful person all the limbs of that beautiful form capture the heart and the face is beautified by merciful glancing hmm? so in this way this form is described and this is krishna describing his own form but then the this is the cover page the lotus is there right <clears throat> this is the way you should meditate on the lord <clears throat> so um, as far as we are concerned in the in the school of bhakti yoga that we follow in the prabhupada's direction <clears throat> for us that meditation on the lord's form is largely uh, given to us as a process by meditating on the lord's deity form hmm? <clears throat> we don't find ourselves training ourselves sitting like that and you know closing our eyes and you know looking at the muladhara chakra and this and that and then going on the heart we don't find that we doing that so much right <clears throat> maybe the pure devotees can access that form of the lord also but for sadhakas like ourselves that same process which is explained here transforms into a more realistic tangible and viable way uh, by meditating on the lord's deity form and therefore it is absolutely essential philosophically and practically to understand that there is no difference between the lord in the heart and the deity form in the temple that absolute connection of oneness uh, between the two forms has to be clearly accepted within the heart with shraddha hmm? that since i cannot see the lord in the heart if i just close my eyes and do that i will probably fall asleep or do you know thus thinking of all sorts of crazy things you know i cannot access the lord in the heart so then the merciful lord and the acharyas gave us a deity to the pancharatrike vidhi to so meditate on the vidhi or the form of the lord then when you when you bathing him meditating on his lotus feet you putting the ankle bells and but even his lotus feet you're putting a tulsi and chandan meditating on his lotus feet right you're putting a, a necklace around him you're meditating on his chest you you're putting a nice sash around his waist you're meditating on that part of the lord right and you put earrings you're meditating on the lord's ears and you paint the lord's form like you see you know girdhari ji today is is is, is gopal ji is you know one of our devotees has painted him so nicely and then you know, our bindavan our hridas prabhu and others all our expert painters they spend so much of time with love devotion paint and brush paint so the meditating on the lord so it makes even the lord's f- face even more beautiful right 
the intricacy of all the petals and all the paint and the color etc right you go to brindavan that that is something which is so beautiful to see when the deity is a black colored form that you can paint like that right so in this way we are expected to focus our attention very deeply when we when we see the deity of the lord it's unfortunate sometimes that we don't appreciate krishna's presence in front of us in the deity form so well it is unfortunate sometimes that we just come and because we are our our bhakti may be often times tinged with a mechanistic approach right so you offer obeisance you stand up offer you know, say pranam mantra and look at the deity form and then you go to the next thing <laughs> but it would be so nice if you could you know allow the it is this the word is ekatra the word ekatra is used the word is ekatra it means to collect to bring to focus huh? ekatra is same as ekagrata ekatra ekagrata is the same word right so when you look at the form of the lord right you of course start with the, with the lotus feet we are supposed to collect the consciousness from all its diverse distractions and ekagra chitta banke look at the forms of the lord's lotus feet and then in this way actually gradually if we do that as a regular practice of looking at the lord's feet with love and devotion and offering gentle nice good prayers if we can offer those prayers right <clears throat> there was a competition years ago in the presence of ramanujacharya when he was in south india a competition you know devotion competition not like you know boxing fighting like that <clears throat> devotion competition hmm? who can write the maximum verses glorifying krishna's lotus feet right so all the mahans and all the great people came to you know they were writing in elaborate sanskrit poetry describing lords ranganath swami's lotus feet ranganath is the you know one of the most prominent ishta devs of the shri sampraday uh, vaishnavas and who won the match ramanujacharya <laughs> he wrote a thousand verses thousand verses glorifying the lord's lotus feet can you imagine what what realization only two feet five fingers each five toes each <laughs> and two heels and you know and, and is whatever the lord is whatever we see the form but <clears throat> the heart is filled with love it it doesn't see just the physical form of that it exudes with so, so much of poetry came out from his heart thousand words is glorifying the lord's feet so that's the power in the feet of the lord and therefore the lord always the when the lord sleeps we have seen the lord's hand is like this he sleeps like that and his hand is like this so he's telling us we are told that mudra everything has why the, you know, the mudra why the lord does something is very special so he hand is like this that you meditate you guys you people you devotees my dear children you meditate on this part of me so he's in is like that his hand is like this and he's pointing towards his feet he said this part is most important for you <laughs> right <clears throat> so yes so by meditating on the lord's feet so much power so much potency is there therefore we could be little more benefited if you extend our darshan uh, uh, and actually see gradually the lord's form and the, you know the devotees make so much of labor in putting that belt putting that sash around the kamar patta you know the devotees make so much of pain to do that even even appreciating that the pujari's you know devotional uh, uh, endeavor the cloth i mean the type of endeavor it takes to make that cloth stitch that cloth and make that dress you know we, we just i just take it for granted or oh, somebody did the dress and somebody put up the dress and somebody put the jewelry it's over you know but it takes months to make a dress it takes months and months of devotees designing and making a dress to to appreciate the dress the form the necklace etc right so this is this what happens by doing that we feel a deeper sense of connection this is called as yoga this is real yoga we connecting to the lord through our eyes and through the eyes by offering prayers through our heart right so we can connect to the lord like that to see huh? that's why we go to different places why we just not satisfied looking at gopinath yeah, gopinath is around but we still go to see sham sundar we go to see you know vrindavan chandra we go to see you know banke bihari we go to see you know uh, you know we go to so many is going to devotees go to so many temples why because they want to relish the same lord coming in different uh, <coughs> you know, 
Advaita Machit Manadim Ananta Rupam. He is our Ananta Rupa. The same Krishna, Ananta Rupa he has got. He comes as Jagannath Puri, he goes as Jagannath. How much was the Lord relishing that? When you look at, when we are supposed to follow in the Lord's footsteps, talking about meditating on the Lord, we, meditate on, we come to the temple of the Lord and offer prayers and maybe in five minutes we are done. Right? But Mahaprabhu Chaitanya was standing at the Garud Stamba, right? For hours together. Hours together. I mean, we sometimes, you know, push, uh, the Pujaris push us, you know, in Jagannath Puri, chalo, 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 like that. But even if you were out to stand there for five hours, would we stand there and for five hours? Pujaris said, okay, you allow him five hours, stand here only for five hours. We think it's like a punishment. <laughs> I want to go and take prasad now. Time for prasad. Right? No, no, you stand here and offer prayers, five hours. <laughs> Our heart will, you know, we have, <laughs> you cannot do that. You know, even if you are allowed to stand there for a long time, the heart is so shallow with realization. Hmm? And there is that we require more depth for that. So much more depth of realization to stand from the Lord like Mahaprabhu Chaitanya. Hours and hours and hours and hours and never getting satiated. And when he cannot see that form, he just gets so upset. He goes to Alal Nath. So upset he can't see the Lord. What happens? Can't stay in this place. And they're haunted by the Lord's beauty. I will go in Allah Nath and stay. That is the type of attraction which the Lord had for Lord Jagannath. Right? He was captured by Jagannath's beauty. Mahaprabhu was captured completely by the Lord's beauty. Right? It was impossible to stay for 15 days without seeing the Lord. So these are the exalted states we are looking at. Right? <clears throat> but it at least starts with at least offering few more minutes of prayer and seeing the Lord's form. Now the next step, of course, is that when you're not in the temple, we talked about the Lord's form in the heart and we brought him to the level of discussion where we see in the form of the deity. But you cannot be in the temple all the time. The brahmacharis may be a little more time, the rasas even less time. Then what about that? So then we go even further. Acharya is even, even a further process. You can meditate on the Lord's name. On the name. The name is not different from the deity. And the deity is not even from the Lord in the heart. And the form of the Lord in the heart is not even from the original Lord in the, in Golok Vrindavan. So, like Prabhupada was saying today, during the morning class, he was saying that, this name is imported. <laughs> Prabhupada says the word imported. Because Narada Sagur says, Goloka, Harinama uh, Sankirtana. Uh, uh, it's come from Golok Vrindavan. So, uh, imported, Prabhupada said the word. Right? That means the holy name is not a part of the material world. It is not that material sound, Krishna, K-R. It's not an alphabet, K-R. It's in a, it looks like material, right? You can put it into a name, K-R-I. But it is not mundane. It is not mundane. Right? It is transcendental. There are only two things in this world which come from the spiritual world in this world. Everything here is an exhibition of the illusory potency of, the, of Maya. Everything. All that we see in the, in the 14 worlds and in unlimited universes is all a fantastic, powerful creation of the illusory potency. Everything consisting of 26 elements as analyzed by Sankha Yoga people. Right? But there are only two things in this world which are so special which are not derived from this world they have come from the eternal world the Nitya Jagat param param padam, and they come here too therefore they are most worshipable this is a realization of Gaur Govind Swami Maharaj what are those two powerful things and they are coming here for only one purpose for giving people of this world complete shelter. People in this world are shelterless. There is no shelter. What are those two things? The holy name and the Nitya Siddha devotees of the Lord. <clears throat> they are coming here. People like Srila Prabhupada, people like Thakur Nautam Das, the, the six Goswamis, etc., all our Parampara Acharyas, they are not a part of the Sadhana Siddha group. They are Nitya Siddha group. 
right so they have descended and now along who is descended nam purna brahma nam is purna brahma the complete brahma right so these two are descended here and if we just take shelter of the lord's pure devotees the shelter of the lord's holy name it's a perfect process do not have to go anything beyond these two things chant hare krishna mantra and serve those devotees who instruct you that is the samam bonam the crystallized essence of all the scriptures which were ever written or will be ever written in the entire creation and nothing beyond this there's just nothing beyond in the millions of shlokas ever composed also ever written by shila vyasdev there's there will be nothing beyond these two things what is that follow the instructions of those pure devotees who come from the spiritual world into this world to guide to give shelter to give the example and number 2 <coughs> shelter of the lord's powerful holy names these two are powerful enough to give shelter to the entire creation so this is our ashray <coughs> krishna is called as ashray vigraha uh, and uh, patan thakur says namashraya kori jotana tumi takhan apan kaje right so by just doing nama ashraya and guru pad ashraya everything is complete everything is complete in just two things shri guru pad ashraya and shri nama ashraya so the more and more our heart evolves heart has to evolve the heart evolve means the consciousness has to evolve there's only thing which evolves the body is not evolve as per nonsensical darwinian theory the body is not evolve from one to the next only consciousness evolves bodies cannot evolve bodies are all designed fixed structures by brahma this is don't no, no mutation all this nonsense not there right so the consciousness evolves but consciousness evolves on also in one life it is not that from one life to the next to go to the heart you can evolve in one body and keep on evolving in that body in one birth you can evolve so much right you are born with x consciousness light here kala shuddha sambhava but you can evolve to brahmana you can you can evolve to vaishnava you can evolve to param vaishnava you can evolve to param hamsa in one life consciousness can evolve right so in our evolution we would like to read we would like to discuss we would like to talk about hear all those things do all those things which increase our shraddha in nama ashraya and shri guru pad ashraya whatever association we talk about whatever we talking about all the literature we read if we can just be focus is this going to help me in increase my shraddha to the nam or to shri gurudev then that association is most desirable that literature is most desirable to read and to distribute right <clears throat> so on today's wonderful day let us meditate on these essential truths uh, which are revealed from the pijo shrimad bhagavatam <clears throat> and pray that we may have ever increasing faith uh, commitment to follow this process which we've been so much blessed by uh, our spiritual masters right it is so rare to reach these conclusions right it is not easy to reach this conclusion what bhagavatam is so effortlessly giving out because by and large everyone is manda sumanda mata madha bhagya bhuta upadritah being manda bhagya everyone is this here and there here and there they don't know what they're doing even in spiritual circles they're all completely confused right and then in spirituality doing all sorts of things you know but for us it is such a clear message coming out loud and clear from the pages of bhagavatam from our spiritual masters so with unlimited gratitude uh, to them uh, let us rededicate ourselves on today's auspicious day you know what the day is today <laughs> uh we dedicate ourselves to the auspiciousness of what we all have received from our beloved spiritual masters thank you very much hare krishna shri prabhu pad ki jai